Greetings to everyone. We are live for our Hindi session and I do hope that uh, more people can join us. Uh, so today it's um, third of our workshops that we're doing uh, virtually online. Uh, so this is basically an initiative uh, by Step Beyond Borders that we have taken to give an opportunity to people who at this moment don't travel, but who are eager to experience some culture, especially the Indian one. So we are giving this opportunity to step beyond borders virtually. There are a lot of people who want to learn the language. There are a lot of people who plan to travel. We do believe that after coronavirus, still travel will not disappear. We do believe that people will be traveling, but with a new approach, where people who believe that the travel industry can survive only through meaningful travel. So today our topic is Hindi. We're going to teach you basic words and expressions that you can use while traveling to India or even when you travel um, to any other country where there are a lot of Indians or if you have some Indian colleagues or friends with whom you would like to communicate and to see a nice smile on their face whenever you say some Indian word. Hello everyone, I can see Elaine, I can see Viola joining us. Thank you so much. Both of them know pretty good Hindi. Thank you so much for joining us. So uh, today I am not the one who is going to teach Hindi. So I am going to connect with one of our coordinators who is going to share some tips with us. Today we're going to connect with Disha. Disha. Hello. Thank you so much for giving your evening to us. So, Disha is one of our coordinators and she is from Jaipur. She is a young lady graduate from Mumbai who traveled also to many, many cities in India. So, um, today uh, we are going to learn basic Hindi with Disha. Disha, the floor is yours. Please teach us this wonderful language. At least okay, some, some words. <laughs> I hope you're doing fine though. Good, thank you. All right. Uh, namaste everyone. I am Disha and today I will be introducing a few basic words in Hindi and a few phrases, a few things in Hindi do's and don'ts that can really help you get a more local experience, understand the people better and meanwhile the country as well so uh, i also hope everyone is safe and healthy at home so i'm just going to begin now so uh, to give you a little background of where hindi comes from is hindi is originated <laughs> okay uh, so basically hindi is originated from sanskrit like i was saying and sanskrit is considered the mother of all languages in terms of its grammar and its uh, pronunciations, it, it, it is considered to be very, very scientific. Uh, now, uh, you might, I'm pretty sure all of us must have heard of words like guru, karma, and yoga, yoga, all of these words which are really common in, in our language. But there are also a lot of words in Hindi which have been adopted and, and uh, made better in the English language, like mother, name, royal, and many more words have been adopted from the Hindi language. Uh, now, most of our cultural programs are based in the local communities. And so to ensure that everybody has a local experience, we make sure that before our volunteer, volunteers, our participants go out in the field to start doing their workshops, we give them a basic uh, on-ground understanding of Hindi. And that is why we're here today. So, let's so get this, this is about uh, ground level experiences. We have uh, a lady joined joined us uh, from UK. So she messaged Chai. So Chai is a very important. She commented Chai. It's very important part of right. Indian culture. Go right. everywhere. Use Chai. <laughs> yes. But yes, yeah. it's very really true. That there are a lot of borrowings from uh, Sanskrit. A lot of people they don't even imagine that the word shampoo. Shampoo. I tell this to all our uh, volunteers and interns who travel uh, to India. The word shampoo is originated from Sanskrit. It originally means 
to put natural oil on your hair right and massaging then, your hair uh, right Yes, and massaging your hair. So British people borrow this word uh, as a symbol of washing your hair, right? Good. And in the same way, with the pajamas. Pajamas are very comfortable, comfy trousers which people can wear even at night, right? But okay. for Indians, for Indians, pajama is a tr- type of a trouser. So basically, it's kind of pants, right? Right. Right. So Correct. these are. the borrowings which a lot of uh, people don't even realize that it has connection to sanskrit so right. this is very important to give this insight to people who learn hindi to catch some similarities within their vocabulary that they have in the hindi so much let's go ahead right. all right uh now uh why we also ensure that uh, we start with these basic things is because a language tells a lot a lot about the culture of our about how people think and about how people communicate so for example when we start with namaste so basically namaste means i respect you i acknowledge you i respect you namaste uh in fact in yoga we also have a tree pose which is basically respecting our body the nature so these uh, yoga and our language is very interconnected all the things are very interconnected so i want to start with another word which is dhanyawad dhanya means i am grateful and it's a, so we don't have a literal word for thank you in hindi but we we have dhanyawad which basically means i convey my gra- gratefulness or my regards to you so dhanyawad hasmik for having me here <laughs> Thank you so much for joining right. us. Um Disha, I can see that some of the people are asking us questions. So uh to everyone who follows us right now, uh I would request you to keep asking the questions and once Disha is done with the main part of uh giving the basics, we will touch upon all the questions that you have. Okay? So I think we'll we have a... right. I'm taking some notes. So we will be back to all those questions after we just complete the basic parts. Okay, I think this one I can get to it right away because since we're on the topic, so actually India has more than 120 to 130 official languages. So it is pretty insane, but yes, because most of them come from a basic background from the same area which is Sanskrit, uh the words are very similar, the pronunciations are very similar. So I am a Hindi or Marwari and a basic sanskrit speaker so for me to understand sanskrit uh, punjabi gujarati these languages is comparatively easier because there are a lot of words which are very similar so that's answering your question i hope i have answered your question uh i, so I would just like to give a small insight uh, into this point as a foreigner uh, who speaks right. hindi To be honest, um when I started learning Hindi, it was really tough for me to understand the other uh even Marwari, the other languages, right? right. So in Rajasthan speak Marwari, uh people local people speak Marwari, but um for me, I can understand maybe 20%, 30% and right. same is about uh for Punjab, Punjabi is quite close to Hindi. Right. If I compare right. for example Punjabi with uh Bengali or if i compare malayalam with uh punjabi right. then definitely uh punjabi is way easier to learn if you learn hindi if you know already right. hindi it's easy for you to know punjabi rather than malayalam uh but yes there are uh really huge differences in pronunciation right. in uh, writing in uh, some grammatical structures though the logic the language logic is very similar right okay. so the rest of the logic of the uh, language hindi then it's easier to understand the job as well right right so uh now moving on to the next word is maaf kijiyega so in, again in hindi we don't have literal translations to sorry and words like thank you but again so if i want to say that i want to say sorry about my bad internet so i would say maaf kijiyega mere wifi ke liye so koi baat is one with <laughs> right now uh moving on is uh now i'm going to move on to basic pleasantries where people where how are you where are you from so these are the basic conversations which people can have with local people so i want to start off with by asking how are you so in hindi 
the entire uh, sentence structure is totally different from uh, in the english language in fact you can uh, say it it is actually the opposite so in hindi when i when i want to ask you how are you i start by you so aap kaise hain how are you so aap kaise hain and aap literally translate to you honorific you so if i ask hasmik aap kaise hain so she will reply by me which means me literally and theek hu theek hu is i am fine or achhi hu is good so aap kaise hain hasmik main achhi hu aur aap kaise hain main bhi achhi hu <laughs> okay uh, so in the comments i will be writing slowly some of the words that we're discussing now so people can also follow up they can try to right. read it right yes so we were talking about may okay, achieve so may on. like i said uh uh that uh, after this lesson we will have another uh post about very basic words uh for those people who want um uh overall to learn uh the survival guide to india so it will be kind of a picture with uh basic words yes netflix killed all the internet <laughs> a copy saying that in the old days uh, people used to say i bo namas maybe a okay uh hakop in your case you need to say maybe acha hu for females we use achi ending e achi and for males we use acha okay so aap you you need to say me acha hu and i need to say me achi hu so depending on the gender the ending of the word acha will change let's see whether disha is able to join us hello hello harut i hope you will start also learning some hindi for those who are joining right now this is just a reminder that we're having a hindi workshop yes me uh samajhta hu in general i understand and uh, samaj sakta hu it means i can understand so these are kind of um aplav uh, you're saying that joining hands together and bow down nowadays also we do that yeah uh when you say namaste you generally um don't touch anyone else except your own positivity keeping within your own circle so you just touch both your hands together and say namaste basically namaste has so many meanings it has uh, the meaning of uh, namaste is uh, very diverse people uh, have different explanation uh, of usage of namaste it, besides just saying uh, people bow down and say hello for the day uh, they also believe that when um, someone is uh, practicing yoga someone is uh, feeling uh, himself or herself with positivity through meditation they should keep this positivity within themselves and this positivity can go out basically if you touch someone negative uh, so this energy should be kept within you and uh, people prefer to keep their energy within the, themselves and their uh, divinity their gods so they uh, circulate their positivity within their own body and then another explanation is there which also says that uh, people do namaste to connect uh, uh, the um, upper powers which are the gods with your own uh, soul so it's basically uh, putting your hands uh, together uh, pointing up which also has the meaning of uh, giving kind of uh, connection of your soul and uh, your current gods Esther Bian Borders how much hindi should one know to volunteer uh that's a wonderful uh question most of our volunteers when they travel here they don't know uh any hindi uh 
We do have some uh, volunteers who came uh, to us knowing already some basics, but most of our volunteers who go to uh, volunteer in schools, slums, uh, hospitals, they don't know any Hindi. They learn the basics from the workshop that we provide. We provide at least one workshop covering the main words and expressions, but at the beginning, at least for one week, Step Beyond Borders provides um, a coordinator who supports uh, the project uh, for the translation. And basically one week is the period of kind of incubation for us, which means that the person will uh, get adjusted to the project and most importantly to the reality of India, because a lot of people, they experience cultural shock, they, um, uh, start feeling the culture only after one uh, week because first week is confusing. They don't understand how the life works, let alone how the project um, works, what uh, we expect or what the beneficiaries expect. However, the same is also from the other side. The beneficiaries also need one week to get uh, acquainted with the uh, volunteer, to understand their working style, to understand even the basic words uh, that uh, the volunteer will uh, use uh, while talking, even if it is in English, because uh, many of our beneficiaries, they don't speak English. Yes, we do have projects where we've worked uh, quite really hard uh, during several years. Uh, one is, for example, a deep public school where students started from totally mm -hmm. zero English, and now they do have a pretty good level of English and they can understand our volunteers. Another one is one slum where we work for child education and we do kind of extracurricular activities for them, and English teaching is one of uh, the programs that we have. So we've, we've had really good number of volunteers who came and uh, gave a lot of time to the students to understand uh, English. But uh, when we talk about uh, knowledge of Hindi to volunteer, it's actually not 100% um, obligation for any volunteer. We do appreciate if the volunteer already knows some um, Hindi, but if you don't know, you can learn the basics when you're already here. And then we do have support for our volunteers, at least for uh, one week till uh, both the sides of the project will understand each other smoothly. Usually language does not uh, become a challenge for us. Uh, even smile can be a lang uh, language um, barrier uh, overcoming uh, option for people because people can simply communicate with hands and with gestures. We've had a lot of uh, volunteers who, uh, who were not also perfect in English, but they uh, managed to uh, fulfill a project, not something related to English. It could be like construction, it could be sports project, uh, having um, different types of uh, non-verbal communication with their beneficiaries. So yes, learn Hindi. It's quite important if you want to uh, be independent in India, if you want to show people that you appreciate them. Because for us, the most important part is not just for you to know the basics of Hindi and uh, uh, to kind of uh, connect with some random phrases. But the most important part is that you should share some words with the local people and they will feel really happy hearing a foreigner talking Hindi. Uh, so moving on. So what Hasmik said to me was Nahi. That means no, not this time. <laughs> not again. But Chale, let's, uh, let's go ahead. Chale means uh, let's go ahead. So yeah. now... Uh, next thing is, uh, aap kaha se hai? which basically means people are curious where you're from. When you're on the project, there will be a lot of people who would even just try to, most of them would just try to have a basic conversation with you. And this could be a really good conversation starter, which is aap kaha se hai? which means you, kaha se, where are you from? So if I ask Hasmik, aap kaha se hai? so she will reply by saying, Main, her country name and say whom. So, aap kaha se hai, Asmik? Nisha, mein Armenia se hu. Aap kaha se hai? Uh, Asmik, mein India se hu. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, then there are uh, very basic things. Ha, na, which basically means yes and no. So, when I said maaf ki jayega, Asmik said nahi. That means na. Na or nahi. These are replaceable words. Again, mm -hmm. there are a lot of pronouns we have for each word. So it would be easier if you stick to probably one or two. And then, you know, 
over time you will get used to them so na nahi no these are different different pronouns that we use uh then uh one quick tip that i give i i try to give to every foreigner is the using the word ji so for example uh if i want to show my respect to anybody so mr miss mr master uh one quick hack to this is g so basically after the name i say g so when i address hasmik and i want to show respect to her i say hasmik ji aap kaise hain you know hasmik how miss miss hasmik how are you to hasmik ji aap kaise hain disha ji main achhi hu right और दिशा जी आप कैसे हैं? अभी चल रहा है इट्स गोइंग ऑन इंटरनेट इंटरनेट चल रहा है इंटरनेट इज राइट right right uh now uh, like hasmik was uh, saying uh, before also that the word word order is totally different uh in, than english but the interesting thing about hindi is even if you pick up some basic words like i feel hasmik's hindi is very very good because like she's really picked up the right words and she knows how to use them well <laughs> so she can really communicate her message easily now i would uh like uh right uh, right mudit uh, g can be used as a yes to so if 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 yes. hasmik asks me something i can just say g so which also means yes so thank you mudit for that uh now uh, i would like to introduce a few terms which i feel uh, have really are really interesting for everybody to know so one is vasudeva kutumbakam which basically means that the world is one family so there are no boundaries no countries no no dissections all of us are one family living under one roof which is the sky so this is the whole idea of vasudev kutumbaka and then there is another uh, shlok uh, another doha another short poem that i would like to read for everybody before we wrap things up today so uh, this is basically about uh, so i i'll for say it in uh, sanskrit uh, in hindi and then probably uh, translate it so it says pothi par par kar jag mua pandit bhayana koi which basically means by reading a lot lots and lots of books you will not become a scholar man but dhai akshar prem ka pade so pandit hoy which basically means so in hindi prem is a one and a half letter word which basically means dhai akshar prem ka dhai is one and a half dhai akshar prem ka basic uh, so whoever learns to understand and live by the not... 1.5 letter word uh disha i think there was Hello. some word which was not clear to everyone um I think there uh, it's about the phrase that you said the beginning phrase that you said okay uh, because there is a question I, what was that word wasudev kudumbakam okay probably i'll i'll right i'll type it out okay so i posted that word it's basically wasudev kutumbakam very long in the world <laughs> right right uh, with basic so this is a, uh, an entire philosophy in itself which basically means that the world is one family right i think you correct yes so i already commented right right right, right. all right uh so the the last uh, poem that i would like to conclude with is this one that whoever learns to understand the 1.5 letter of word and live by it is the real learned man is the real knowledgeable man and this one thing that i have feel, felt through our programs when i go out with the volunteers in the field is even if you don't know the no hindi even if you know how to convey love through a smile through a kind gesture people do understand yes. that love is a language that everybody speaks and the ones who know how to speak the languages are the real heroes of this world that's that's a very good point yes because to be honest there can be people who speak wonderful hindi but um still they cannot express as much um uh, love or as much um 
I would say, uh, em empathy to people with whom they work rather than uh, some other people who may even lack knowledge of uh, basic Hindi, but they express so much love that this love right. is spread. Basically, we should say that no matter how much Hindi you know, uh, spread more love. Right, spread more love. Yeah, and that's what we do with our projects. Lots of love, lots of work, lots of giving. That's what I'm always show. We spread love. Yes. It also means the service, does it? Deva. Uh, so, okay, so literally speaking, uh, Deva means God. Now, uh, God does, in, in Hinduism, we don't believe that God is just some uh, superior power which is somebody sitting above the clouds looking down at us and saying, oh, this is right, this is wrong. No. We think that God is somebody who lives by the highest values of life, with, lives with utmost truth and love every day. So I think that is uh, one thing, because Deva is God. But again, God yes. does not mean a superior power. It means uh -huh. I can be Deva, you can be Deva, I can be Devi actually. Uh, Devi. But we, we, we can all be Devas and Devis if we live by the right values. But I think there is another word, Seva, right? Seva, seva girl. Right. Right. Seva is so, the service. Yes, yeah, selfless service. Seva is selfless service. Right. Yeah. And in fact, even Dharma, which so, I think is one of the most uh, misunderstood words right now in uh, Hinduism, Dharma is not so, service towards God or something. Dharma is something that you live by. So if I live by with the right values, with the with the right truth, then that is my dharma. Truth is my dharma. What I bear inside me is my dharma. Okay, that's really philosophical. <laughs> that's something that uh, people need to study um, philosophy, Indian philosophy, Indian uh, religion to understand uh, all right. these values more. And they need to also right. at least once be in India to feel how right. people live very differently through their belief and through cherishing every day. Because that's always right. what I tell all our uh, participants. Um, right. That at the end of your project, there is one thing that you will tell me you're, you're taking away with you. And usually every single participant, volunteer, intern, language abroad student, they tell one thing, they realize how Indians appreciate every single day of their life and right. how much smile is on their face, no matter in what conditions they live. Correct. This is really true because a lot of volunteers, they, they, they see in their countries in the US and Europe, uh, kids with all the gadgets and still complaining of life. Right. And then in India, they see kids just running, half naked, playing cricket with each other, and laughing right. and smiling in the life. So this is truly different uh, kind of um, experience to be in the country and also to study its philosophy, to study its language. So I do hope that after coronavirus, people will have again a chance to travel and, and to visit India. I have another story actually. Uh, so I was uh, working with this German volunteer and uh, she was telling me about her experiences in a local train in Rajasthan. And she was telling me that the moment I entered it, I was like, how does this work? How, do, how can people, you know, travel like this? And when she sat, it, it was a basically, it was a general class train, which basically means least amount of facilities are there. And she told me that when I was looking at the people there, I was surprised that it somehow works. They make it work. And with the utmost amount of humility and, and pride and love. There are unwritten rules and regulations which can guide the Indian society because <laughs> if we see a number of people uh, who simply follow the regulations in their head, it's right. already given from their birth how things right. should work. <laughs> right. Yeah, and in India, things work. Even if there is no rule, there is some sometimes chaos, but still, this works for India. Mm, this is right, really amazing. Yeah. I used to say the same to all our participants who are during the first uh, trip uh, of theirs from airport uh, to our accommodation. They usually right. say, oh my God, how does the traffic work? 
There are so many cars and there are so many bikes. They don't follow any rules, but still there is no accident. Right. Like all the accidents works. This is Indian mm. philosophy. So Hindi is quite similar to Indian philosophy. You may find right. it a bit challenging by someone comment saying that Hindi is not difficult for a person who does not come from mostly um countries who are Asian um in uh, those countries uh, who have closer language uh, system with uh, Hindi for you guys it's very easy like for Nepalese it's very easy uh to understand Hindi for uh people who speak Urdu it's also easier to understand Hindi even for people who speak um Farsi the language in Iran it's also easier for them but for people who come from uh, the US for example or uh from the UK from Canada there is very different uh, so it's not that easy however things still work however the language still works because the more uh, the more vocabulary you gain the easier it will be um for you to communicate and well if you just use several words in your communication like yes or no or if you just say go come i don't know i want basic things so it means hello i'm not sure i think she didn't say that namaste means not only hello but it means also goodbye so it's very easy to say simply namaste and also namaste for goodbye no need to remember two different words then uh she talked about saying yes and no ha and na uh she also said chale which means let's go another word that she used was um how are you aap kaise hain as a reply to that you will say me achi hu for girls and me acha hu for boys and then she also asked from where are you aap kaha se he aap you kaha where says from and then he is auxiliary verb to be um so uh and uh, the reply of this will be me armenia say who i am from armenia i see a comment here ali telling that uh, urdu and hindi are very different ali when uh, we talk uh, ali asfar so when we talk about um, hindi and when we study it in details we realize that a lot of uh, words come not only from sanskrit but they are borrowed from sanskrit and also from uh, farsi and later on farsi is also borrowed by urdu so connection is there if you just study some uh, urdu uh, and farsi connection you will realize that even in your daily life you use a lot of words uh, like azad uh, which are not basically from sanskrit they are uh, from uh, farsi and uh, how we know it because there is also similarity between armenian and farsi uh, and hindi in this case thank you disha thank you so much uh, i do appreciate your time i do understand that uh, you had some internet issues but it was really nice having you you touched upon really important points about the language just to summarize and to finish this online class i would like to give you several small very small tips if you plan to learn hindi one is first of all don't be afraid of the complication of hindi because um it seems that uh, the language the writing is totally so different that you can really get confused it seems like what kind of system language system it is however when you start re reading and learning slowly you get to know that it's really not too complicated right uh my second uh, advice to those who want to learn hindi will be the following whenever people want to learn the language especially those who want to travel to the country they prefer to learn just speaking no grammar i have heard a lot of our language abroad students who want to learn hindi saying you know i want to learn only to speak however i would definitely advise all of you to start also learning slowly some letters why so uh in fact a lot of indians uh, they write with latin scripts as well when they chat with their friends or when when they post something you could see that a lot of people indian people they uh simply type with latin script 
but in English, there are a lot of letters which don't exist. For, uh, sorry, in Hindi, there are a lot of letters which don't exist for English. Uh, Hindi has uh, three different varieties of T. Three different varieties of T. So basically, there are different letters which you cannot even hear or you cannot even write in Latin script. For that, you simply need to learn the alphabet uh, of Hindi so that you can understand the differences, mild and slight differences in the letters. Just a very small example. Um, we have a student uh, who at the moment studies Hindi uh, with Step Beyond Borders uh, virtual language program. So she was uh, constantly asking uh, the teacher because she didn't learn the letters yet. So she was asking the teacher, why do we write girl, larika, L, a D K A and not L A R K A. Basically, in Hindi, um, you you hear it as larika. It's a that sound r is simply not possible to mirror in English. This letter does not exist in English. So in Hindi, people simply think you know you can put D and you can pronounce it r. So it's similar to B. However, for someone who speaks English, they will pronounce it as latka, simply D. So to escape this confusion, my second tip is learn letters. Even if you cannot read all of the letters, because there are so much combinations of vowels and consonants, still learn the letters so that you can differentiate which letter is pronounced how. So my third advice to everyone would be listening to Bollywood songs. Try to listen a lot to Bollywood songs and try to get the lyrics. When you get the lyrics, you try to repeat the words and this way you can learn. Um, yes, we are saying Larki as a girl and Larka as a boy. Um, I, did I confuse it? I'm really sorry if I said Larka and I said girl, it's boy. Uh, Larki with E ending, it's the girl. Um, so I was saying that if you watch a lot of uh, Bollywood uh, songs, listen to them and then try to repeat the lyrics, it will help you because uh, there are a lot of common words which uh, are repeated in the same song. So you can listen to it several times and you can mem memorize it. And then the next tip would be simply to, if you have enough time to watch uh, Bollywood movies, the full movies with, uh, maybe with uh, transcript, maybe with the words uh, showing on the screen. This way you can also learn uh, the language easier because um, it's, it's a proven fact. No matter how much you simply study, you need some practice. And the practice is speaking as well as listening. So both is needed. So um, Disha is giving a nice movie recommendation. Here, Javani, hai, Divani. Okay, so this youth is quite crazy. This is true. Thank you so much, Disha. I do hope that the people who are following us uh, may have the chance to watch this uh, movie. I have not watched it. I can definitely take this as an opportunity to go and watch this movie. Thank you so much. Uh, so guys, um, to sum up, uh, I would uh, definitely advise all those people who want to learn uh, Hindi, keep in touch because uh, we will be happy to reply to your questions uh, on our page. But also in case you're interested in uh, some uh, professional courses, you can uh, seek for some online options at this moment. And then you can also check uh, our webpage, uh, stepbeyondborders.org, and you can see some of the options of our language courses there as well. Uh, because when the coronavirus runs away from this world, I hope it will be soon, uh, we do hope to have uh, different people who travel to India, not just for uh, tourist purpose, touristic purpose, but also to learn a language and to volunteer or to do internship. So thank you so much to all of you for being with us live. I hope you enjoyed this Hindi session.